And for more on the legacy of Ed Koch, I want to bring in tonight's panel, Ryan Davis, a veteran of the Howard Dean campaign and executive director of social innovation at Blue State Digital, political journalist and author Dominic Carter, Joe Concha, a multimedia journalist who covers everything from sports to politics and everything in between, and T.J. McCormick, conservative commentator and the host of Good Morning Westchester on WVOX Radio 1460. Guys, thanks very much. Dominic, I want to start with you because you... You spent hour after hour after hour not just interviewing Mayor Koch, but developed a personal relationship with him. He even helped you get your start in television, <laughs> low those many years ago. <laughs> yes, Andrew. Uh, we started out, I, I've had a 30, almost a 30 year relationship with Mayor Koch. We started out almost as adversaries uh, in terms of uh, he was the mayor of New York. This was right before the 89 election, and I was one of the journalists assigned to cover him. And uh, he was, from, from the very first day at City Hall, when you walked in, you knew that there was this legend in, blue, in the Blue Room. And that was Mayor Koch, this living legend. And you walk in and you're like, oh my God, mm. I've got to ask this man difficult questions. And, I mean, and he was a superstar. But what you saw was what you got. If he didn't like you, you knew it. He wasn't a hypocrite. He didn't hide it. He didn't pull punches. He was my type of guy, really was. And so we went from that contentious relationship to he lost the primary to David Dinkins. And that's a story within itself that I can tell you about later. But he lost that primary. And I remember he felt that there wasn't enough diversity with political reporting. And I got my start in television because he called uh, the local CBS affiliate where he would end up going to work after he was done, and he wanted me to put on their public affairs show. I, kn I know you remember the legendary Jim Jensen, oh, sure. who was the host of the show. And thus, that's how I started in television. And so for years, to anyone that would listen, he would say, you know, I got him to start in television, right? <laughs> and so, you know, he, he was witty. He doesn't get enough credit for rebounding the city after the fiscal crisis, the subway strike. He, he did a lot of good things. And he did something that we have seen the passing. There'll be no more like Ed Koch. No more. He turned around the city and redefined himself. Redefined himself. You know, he was seen as a polarizing figure. There, there was the corruption uh, scandals. Mm -hmm. He redefined himself with his endorsement became relevant again. And if you don't believe me, go ask then candidate Barack Obama. Ed Koch endorsed him, giving him critical Jewish uh, support, then went down to Florida and campaigned for him. Obama won the presidency. He was also big for Hillary Clinton in 2000. I mean, his legacy, he really had an impact that lasted well beyond just his tenure in, in Gracie Mansion. I want to go around the table and just get everybody's impressions of, of Ed Koch from however you know far away or whatever perspective you might have had on him, I just what what comes to your mind when you think of Ed Koch? So I don't want to be the the, the negative guy here on, on the panel. I think Ed Koch is a fascinating uh, character. He obviously did a lot for New York City. Um, you know, but I, it would be remiss of me not to mention that that uh, during the height of the AIDS crisis and the beginning of the AIDS crisis, uh, you know, Mayor Koch was uh, nowhere to be seen, uh, and and there are a lot of things that other cities are doing, like San Francisco. Um, uh, that this mayor could have done and, and didn't do, and I think that unfortunately that's one of the stains on his legacy. Though this was also in an era when you know, the President of the United States never said the word, right. and there was still more panic than there was information. Uh, Joe? I was a little young, but you know, from what I've seen and what I've gathered, two words, no filter, and a true centrist, maybe the last true centrist that we've ever seen. Uh, maybe didn't do enough on, on the HIV front, but uh, was a champion of gay rights. On the other hand, he endorsed George W. Bush in 2004. He endorsed Bloomberg when he was a Republican. You couldn't get a read on this guy. And he bought the city back from bankruptcy in the late 70s, as, as you mentioned in your piece. So was he a Republican? Was he a Democrat? Well, he ran as both in two elections. Uh, this is a politician we will never see again, particularly with the country being as polarized as it is now. Yeah, 1982, he had both parties uh, he, he was the nominee for both parties. I don't think we'll ever see that again. Yeah. TJ, uh, an unabashed liberal. Uh, you could paint him with a broad brush in terms of where you know his ideology, whether his party was Democrat or Republican at any given moment. However, uh, as much as he was an undeniable liberal, he stood up to the transit union. He was law and order. He was pro death penalty. He was, uh, you know, he he was uh, an unabashed. He was he wasn't worried about towing any p particular. Per party line, and again, uh, the clo we're closer to the absolute end of an era. He really is the last, one of the last of a dying breed. Dominic, what, what was your take of him 
just as a man, not, a, not as the mayor, not as the politician, but just, I mean, you said he was a straight shooter. Uh, he, was, he, he, was, he was greatly concerned about his image. Um, he was concerned with what his legacy would be. I know these things to be a fact. He was worried that when he left office that the corruption scandals would engulf his entire image. And he turned that all around. And I know these things because um, a few months back, I had dinner with him. And, um, you know, just to, to go to his apartment, and it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. When you look around his apartment, he had mementos from everything during his tenure as mayor. And as I'm walking around his apartment looking at different things, he'll, he'd walk right up and go, this is from where, and like a trip to Israel. And he'd have posters back up from, from the tenure when, when, he was, uh, when he was mayor. So he, he was concerned about his legacy, but he's the type of person, you know, very, very much in your face. Mm -hmm. But he was also, when the cameras were not around, he was concerned about you, the individual. And he would ask you, how are you doing? He'd give you his advice whether you wanted it or not. You know, that's just the type of guy he was. One of the things that, that strikes me about him and, and struck me about him is in this era where, where so many of our political leaders are equivocating on, on every answer, trying to measure their words and come up with, it seemed like he would just shoot straight from the hip and, you know, he, the answer that you got from him on camera would be the same one you would get if it was just the two of you in a room. It's... And that may be the, the, the style that's yeah. missing from so on, many other On the way leaders. to the show, I heard a, a clip of him talking to uh, graduates of the police academy. And he said to them, he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are so important. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. But he says, it's a sick society out there. There are people who are out of their mind and, and looking to do harm. And you're... What politician today is going to talk about a sick society out there? Brilliant. He was great. Yeah, and he I, spoke like yeah. a kid from the Bronx. Yeah. Know, I, his, his best quote was, uh, I'm not the type to get ulcers. I give them. <laughs> I just want to tell you, do we have a quick second to tell you the David Dinkins story? This is to the, the, the show you the, the character of Ed Koch. Da, David Dinkins. Uh, Go ahead. Sir. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's 1989. We were at some playground somewhere. It happened that Koch and Dinkins, as candidates, often cross paths. So they're at the same playground. So Koch, and I mean, this is playing out in the papers. Yousef Hawkins has just been murdered. Mm -hmm. The city is about of New York is about to explode. There are television programs calling New York City the New South. Yep. This is what was really happening. Ed Koch had a hot potato in his lap. And you have the first black candidate, serious contender, running for mayor with a shot at beating him. So they cross paths at this uh, playground area. Koch whispers in Dinker's ear, and it really is a tribute to the man that he is. He says, Dave, David, no matter who wins this primary, the loser must support the winner. Now, why is that important? Remember a few years later, Mark Green and Fernando Ferrer, two Democrats, killed each other, and that's how Mike Bloomberg became the mayor of New York City. And Koch kept his word. And Koch kept his word. He was a major reason why David Dinkins became mayor because Koch said, I endorse him, and whites that were on the fence about voting for Dinkins did so. David Dinkins barely became mayor. We could use more like him. All right, we're going to keep this conversation going online. We want you to head over to Facebook and to Twitter and sound off. How will you remember Ed Koch? We're going to take a quick break here on RFL. Stay with us.